Hello, it is the 20th of March, which is the vernal equinox, which is possibly the most hopeful day of the whole year. So as of tomorrow, there will be more daylight than dark, which is a great moment. I love, I, I love the um, solstice in winter, because that's the sense of days will start to lengthen, but this is the real moment for gardeners. I just wanted to walk you through this beautiful spring border and to show that it's super easy to do and that you can benefit nature and have a beautiful front garden or any garden. So have a closer look. Sorry about the aeroplanes. So in here we've got loads of different varieties of daffodil. But daffodils don't offer that much to nature especially not to bees and if you're a bee lover like me you're always thinking about it but they do give a beautiful splash of colour at this time of year but if you come in closer you can see there's lots more other than daffodils in this bed so silvery grey foliage over here can you see that these are snowdrops and they've actually got these big fat seed cases on them so hopefully that will mean more snowdrops next year they tend to bulk up um, with the bulbs underground so I tend to split them and move them but you do get them seeding sometimes if they're happy and I've found them dotted all over this bit of grass here which is terrific now moving on from there this is some fennel or is it dill oh, it's fennel and um, this does have very pretty yellow flowers later in the year, much later in the year. But I grow it for the foliage at this time of year and going into early summer. And this will shoot up and it will end up being probably about this tall here. Uh, but look at that, what a green. Isn't it terrific? These sort of frondy, frondy leaves. Now, elsewhere in here, I've got one of my favourite plants nestled. This is the poached eggplant which is not yet flowering but it won't be long at all. So its proper name is Limnanthes douglasii and uh, I absolutely love it and honeybees go mad for this one. Moving along, this is um, a great big clump of alliums. It's um, the drumstick alliums and they're called purple sensation. They're really intense purple. Again, they'll get back so high. And just as the daffs are going over, the alliums should start to flower. Now, one really good thing about alliums is that they grow their foliage before their flowers, which means that uh, you don't have to wait for their foliage to die back. So a daffodil, for example, once these flowers have finished, because the foliage came up at about the same time, you have to leave its leaves to die back. And that's usually the moment when you're feeling really impatient, you want to get in, you want to tidy up or plant other things, but you've got to, because those leaves are feeding the bulb for next year. But with an allium, it does all its leaf growing before it flowers. So actually, as soon as it's flowered, you can move on to the next thing. This is um, a lovely shady corner our front garden. Um, I absolutely adore this. In the summer it doesn't do much but in the spring it's just perfect. So you can see here these are primroses, Primula vulgaris. They're a native flower. Uh, you can't, can you see that? There you go. What beauties. They're also edible but that's not why I grow them. This bluey flower, it took me a while to like this. It's called pulmonaria. Um, because of the spottedness on the leaves, it's said to kind of resemble the inside of the lungs. But you can see this bluey colour. This is a classic colour for bees. They see in the blue and yellow spectrum. So you'll notice that most spring flowers tend to be, oh, there goes the car, uh, blue and yellow, purpley blue and yellow. And they have been feasting on this pulmonaria and they've been visiting the primroses, they've been visiting the snowdrops. And there are also crocuses in here. So I love this little spring bit. This started as the best Christmas present I was ever given, which was a dustbin load of horse muck. <laughs> and I left it here and it's turned into this lovely soil and I've planted it up and it's gorgeous. Now, just towards the back, 
is one of my favourite plants and that the world's divided on this. This one here. And this is wild garlic. Pretty pungent if you pick a bit. Oh, blimey. That is strong. But um, aren't those flowers pretty? And again, because it's part of the Allium family, it is beloved by bees. Uh, if you are someone who likes to just walk away from your garden, you know, put something in and not worry about it, then perhaps wild garlic might not be for you because it can be a little bit of a thug, it can take over. But if you are on top of your garden, you like, you know, getting in there, splitting things, moving things around, wild garlic, I think, is a huge asset.